Golden Eye, guys. It is a blissfully cloudy and almost rainy night here, unbelievably, in the drought-stricken hellhole of upstate New York. You know, all the rest of the planet hogging all of the drought news. <coughs> I need to go interview my ducks about the drought. But anyway, here in the drought of 22, we have made it halfway through the month of August. All right, it is now Tuesday, August 16th, 2022, so uh, I am going back and forth. Do we want some No Shit Sherlock, or do we want some good old-fashioned Doomer porn for today's Chronicle of the Collapse? So from the NSS side of the dial... We have moving from natural gas, fossil fuels to renewable energy grows the need for minerals and metals. The world's transition away from fossil fuels towards clean energy is increasing demand for certain minerals, rare earth metals, and the expertise of a scientific discipline that has been dwindling for decades, renewable energy systems are more material intensive than those powered by fossil fuels. Minerals like lithium and nickel are needed for better batteries, rare earth metals for wind turbines and electric motors, and vast amounts of copper and aluminum to further electrify the power grid, you know, talking about, uh, you, you know, we got to charge up all of these electric cars, which is going to be, so this is, you know, just the latest analysis of how they're talking about how mining, how uh, literally eating the planet to save the planet uh, is going, I have heard, anywhere from 300 to 1,000 percent. So anyway, we got that on the bright green lie side of the ledger. And then, all right, we have some new research, some new Doomer porn research. Billions would die from starvation in nuclear war. Ha! Huh. More than five billion people would die from starvation in the event of a full-scale nuclear war between the United States and Russia, a new study has found. So what do you guys want? Do you want bright green lies or do we want doomer porn? Obviously, I know my crowd we're going with the Doomer porn. Okay, we got five billion people dead on the planet. Uh, <clears throat> and, of course, all of our fellow Earthlings that are never mentioned in the article, I'm sure. All right, this is from uh, an outfit called The Hill. The Hill, written by Saul Elbean. Okay, Saul, explain this to us. <clears throat> More than five billion people would die from starvation in the event of a full-scale nuclear war between the U.S. and Russia, a new study has found. That is the worst-case scenario in a nature food study published today, no, published yesterday on Monday, that examined the indirect death call death toll caused by soot soot that word soot from burning cities and forests entered the atmosphere this is called the nuclear winter so this is the latest estimates of the nuclear winter all right and this is uh, this doesn't even count how many millions of people will be immediately incinerated uh, in a nuclear attack. Now, of course, the people of New York City are accepted from this because, as you probably know, if you live in New York City, 
and there is a nuclear attack on New, uh, on New York City, what you do is you go inside. You go inside, you stay away from the windows, and you tune in to your local mainstream media, and you wait for your government to tell you it is safe to go back outside. So that's the people in New York City. They go inside if, if Manhattan is struck by an atomic bomb. Uh, those people go inside, stay away from the windows, turn on their TV, and wait for the mayor of New York City to tell you what to do next. But for all the rest of us who are not incinerated, uh, not counting those people, we're talking about the people starving to death from all of the ash and dust going up in the air, uh, blocking out the sun for a couple of years, and it will cure, global warming will be cured overnight. Overnight, we can get rid of that pesky global warming. You can deny global warming all you want the day after a nuclear attack. Nobody's going to argue with you. All right, we will end global warming. All right. The Rutgers, is it Rutgers or Rutgers? The Rutgers, I think Jeremy Jimenez. Aren't you a uh, graduate of Rutgers University, brother? The Rutgers University team arrived at that 5 billion plus death toll by estimating how much global crop yields would suffer as the drifting clouds blocked out the sunlight that feeds plants that feed people, according to a statement accompanying the study. Okay, first, researchers estimated the quantities of ash, the quantities of ash that would be thrown up by nuclear wars of varying size as major cities in India, Pakistan, the United States, or Russia burned. <coughs> then they loaded that estimate into a U.S. government-sponsored climate forecasting tool to track how that ash would move around the globe and where and how much it would impact food production. All right. In the event you know, of a full-blown U.S.-Russia nuclear war, the model found that the planet's wind patterns would bring circling clouds of smoke and particulates to the skies above major food exporters like the U.S., China, Germany, and the U.K. I did not realize that the United Kingdom was a major global food exporter. Would somebody, uh, Andy the Gardener, would somebody over there in Zombie Island tell us what is it that the UK gives back to this planet. I had some crazy idea that the UK was an island or a bunch of islands. And I I anyway, all right, crashing crop yields in those countries would then trigger a cascade of escalating consequences that would draw the rest of the world into the crisis. With harvests collapsing, so would food exports spreading famine across Africa and the Middle East that depend on imported food for survival, meaning those areas of the world that have exceeded their carrying capacity. You know, I was I get heat for making comments, uh, usually about Sub-Saharan Africa, when I'm using this term about people that never should have been born. So I just want to get a breakaway here. All right. 
my definition, well, of course, my definition of people who should never be, never be, is every person on the planet, okay? Uh, people need to stop being born. I should never have been born. If my mother had had control over the situation, I never would have been born. And you wouldn't be listening to this crap coming out of my mouth because my mama was done with it uh, after my sister. But anyway, this is TMI. Uh, but what I'm referring to is when I'm talking about Africa and the Middle East, people who should never have been born is when an area, when more of a localized area has exceeded its carrying capacity and depends on the rest of the world to feed it. <clears throat> Those are people who should never be born. If you, if, if you are 100% dependent on your survival by eating food that has to be flown in and shipped in and all of this, you should not have children. Well, none of you should have children, but you know what I'm saying. But anyway, this is what this is talking about, and we're seeing it already, you know, this summer. Uh, spreading famine across Africa and the Middle East that depend on imported food for their survival. Under that scenario, under that scenario, this is the full-scale scenario. Alright, three quarters of the people on Earth would be starving to death within two years after the missiles stopped falling, and that would only be the beginning. All right, this is some good doomer porn. By three or four years after the nuclear exchange, global crop, animal, and fishing yields would have dropped by 90%, spreading famine, disruption, and collapse further and triggering other feedback loops. Much of the details of the extent to which crops would fail under such an exchange remains unclear. Uh, this is co-author Lily Zia of Rutgers quote. For instance, the ozone layer. This, this is one of those uh, unknown, unknown. This is an unknown. Okay. Is the ozone layer after a nuclear war, is that an unknown, unknown? Is it a known, unknown? Or is it an unknown, known? I'm thinking this is an unknown known, but anyway, quote, for instance, the ozone layer would be destroyed by the heating of the stratosphere, producing more ultraviolet radiation at the surface, and we need to understand that impact on food supplies. Yes, I bet we do. Like we're really going three or four years, we're really going to be, I'm sure the ozone layer is going to be, a, I think our epidermal layer is going to be a lot more of concern than the ozone layer three to four years after the missiles stop falling. All right. <clears throat> Such a war would need to reach the scale of a full-scale exchange between superpowers to spread famine far beyond the blast zone. Even in the most limited nuclear war, this is the one that everyone's calling for, the limited nuclear war that the team examined, which is a localized nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan. 
which a lot of doobers are, and, and I am certainly uh, not denying the plausibility of that one. Uh, even the most limited nuclear war the team examined in a localized nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan, global food production dived by 7% from soot and ash from the explosions entering the atmosphere. That number, 7%, is far smaller than the crop failures the model found for the U.S.-Russia case study, but it is still bigger than any disturbance to world food supplies since the U.N. Food and Agriculture Organization started tracking them. Such a disruption, you know, from a limited nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan, such a disruption would detonate against a world already facing the prospect of falling crop yields from climate change. A NASA study last year also featured in Nature Food found that corn yields, um, they're talking about climate change now, uh, again, pre yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is talking about not factoring in nuclear war. A, a NASA study last year, also in Nature Food, found that corn yields would begin to fall by 2030, suggesting that major breadbasket regions would begin to face the risks from human-caused climate change, quote, sooner than previously anticipated close quote. The conclusion of the new research was clear. That nuclear war would, quote, obliterate global food systems, co-author Alan Robach said, quote, if nuclear weapons exist, they can be used, and the world has come close to nuclear war several times. Banning nuclear weapons is the only long-term solution, close quote. Of course, there is one more long-term solution, but I don't even need to repeat it. <clears throat> Robach pointed to the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which has been ratified by 66 nations, but none of the present nine nuclear states, quoting Robach, quote, Our work makes clear that it is time for those nine states to listen to science and the rest of the world and sign this treaty. There you go. And uh, we have 119 comments. Here is James of the Clan McLaren. In a nuclear war, those that die initially from the blast would be the lucky ones. That is exactly what they would be. Well, unless you live in New York. Unless you live in New York City, uh, you, you know, you're not going, uh, according to the, uh, I guess, the city of, uh, of New York, if you live in New York City, uh, you will not die in a blast. You'll just go inside and, and turn on your damn TV and wait for the mayor to tell you when it's safe to go outside and... And, you know, go get a damn hot dog at the hot dog cart down the block. Not for the rest of us. We need to get out there uh, and enjoy what? Chasing chippies? Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because so, I need to go duck and cover while I still can. 
you need to duck and cover a little dog. Bye guys. Yes, 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 yes.